Hello and welcome back to my vlog. I'm going to have a bit of a guest speaker today. He doesn't know he's a guest speaker. Um, but um, I, I understand when you're blogging, you can reblog something and uh, wrap a little of your info around it. So I'm going to do that with my vlog. I'm going to re-vlog something. Um, I have seen uh, some images cross my Facebook feed indicating that this is uh, celiac slash gluten awareness week. So I thought I would do a little bit on uh, gluten intolerance, celiac, etc. and so forth. Um, maybe today, maybe another couple of days as well. And I was going to go into some theories on gluten and um, it's in, in your body's intolerance to it. Um, but there's no way I can do as good a job as Dr. Glidden. I've met Dr. Glidden. I know Dr. Glidden through my longevity business. Um, I've learned a lot of things about um, gluten, celiac, Crohn's, etc. Through uh, people in my longevity business and through seeing when, these pe when people learn about gluten and stop eating it, consuming it, how much their health improves. So um, I thought I'd give you a little bit of Dr. Glidden's um, um, webinar on, um, or whatever you call it, I think it was a webinar, on um, celiac, on gluten. Um, and then I'll have a link to the entire about 15 minute video included. But I'm gonna put a little pieces part in there. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy this. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you learn a little something. And uh, take it away, Dr. Glidden. Here's why it's a problem. It's the problem, the problem with grain, specifically wheat, barley, rye, and oats, is not the grain itself. It's the protein that's in the grain. And the protein that's in these grains mostly is referred to as gluten. And gluten is a very difficult protein for the human body to digest. Conservative estimates are that 60% of Caucasians and 80% of blacks have a big problem digesting the gluten protein. Okay? And here's why that happens. Now, a protein doesn't matter whether it's a fish protein or a chicken protein or a wheat, barley, rye, oat protein, a rice protein or a soy protein, doesn't matter. If it's a protein, all that it is is long chains of amino acids or amino acids that have been daisy chained together. Now if you remember from Dr. Wallach's lectures, amino acids are essential nutrients. There are 12 amino acids that are essential nutrients for the human body, which means they need to be imported into the body. The body cannot manufacture an essential nutrient. If a nutrient is uh, uh, categorized as essential, it has to go down the hatch every day. So we get our amino acids from protein. That's the main reason we need to eat protein. Now, regardless of the type of protein, a protein is just a group of amino acids that have been chained together through chemical bonds. This would be the chemical bond and the individual balls in this diagram or circles would be the amino acids. Okay? So this is a very simple protein, a number of amino acids daisy chained together and it's the job of the stomach to break those chemical bonds, liberating the free amino acids. Let's look at that again. Here's a protein and we chew the protein up and swallow it, it goes into the stomach where the stomach hopefully snaps those chemical bonds liberating the amino acids which are now free and which the body can absorb readily. Now here's a picture of a simple protein. <clears throat> you can see here that the balls would be the amino acids daisy chained together in uh, a chemical structure which is either simple or quite complex. These are artists' renditions of electron micrographs of different proteins. This might be a fish protein and a chicken protein and an egg protein and a soy protein. 
uh, et cetera, et cetera. The take home message here is that where the protein came from gives that protein its structure and the structure of protein can be vastly different one from the other and therein lies the problem because the chemical bond that we find in the protein of wheat barley rye and oats is very difficult for the stomach to digest everything has to be just right in the stomach for the stomach to snap those bonds and liberate the free amino acids let's take a look at this <clears throat> here's our digestive tract mouth up here salivary glands so you know we put something into our mouth and our teeth start to mash it up and pound it up and then the salivary glands excrete saliva and it starts to chemically digest the food and then we swallow it food goes into the stomach where the lion's share of digestion happens the stomach if it's healthy contains acid which is really really strong man it is like battery acid if you could stick a tube down your stomach if your stomach acid was healthy and strong and you took some out and dropped it on your skin it burn a hole right through it the pH of a healthy stomach acid is about 1.4 it's very acidic but the stomach has developed a lining that is impervious to the acid the wonders of nature right uh, so we eat food mash it up with our teeth swallow it it goes into the stomach where the lion's share of digestion happens and then the food passes from the stomach into the small intestines and it's the small intestines where all of the absorption of our nutrients happens and that happens through the agency of an anatomical structure called a villi now if you were to take the intestinal tract and cut it in half this is what it would look like all of these structures here are like little tentacles of an octopus right and they are referred to as villi and there are millions of them that's millions with an M and on top of the villi there are thousands of microvilli a thousand million is a billion so in somebody's intestinal tract there are billions of tissues which are designed specifically to absorb nutrients so it's the job of the villi to reach out stick on to a molecule of food that you've digested and suck it in put it into the bloodstream this is the border the intestinal tract is where everything gets absorbed into the bloodstream now once a nutrient or something gets into the bloodstream it's inside the body when it's in the intestinal tract it's outside the body which I know is counterintuitive uh, you think about it if you put a grape you know inside your mouth on top of your tongue technically it would be outside of the body it's not going to be inside of the body until your body digests it and absorbs it into the bloodstream and that happens in the intestinal tract that is the job of the intestinal tract to absorb the nutrients that your system has digested okay however when we eat wheat barley rye or oats we get nothing but trouble because the chemical bonds of wheat barley rye and oats for some reason and we don't know why it just is right for some reason those chemical bonds are very difficult for the stomach to break I mean everything has to be just right for the stomach to break these bonds and liberate the free amino acids and again conservative estimates are that 60 percent of Caucasians cannot do this and 80 percent of blacks cannot do this so this means when the majority of whites and blacks or blacks the majority of people eat wheat barley rye or oats these proteins are undigested and this is a problem because when you get an undigested protein and remember you know they can be very complex right so when you get one of these tumbling through the intestinal tract where there should only be individual amino acids that's like having an elephant in your living room 
and that's a bad idea. That's nothing but trouble. You, you have an elephant outside the house, no problem. You know, maybe for the elephant, but not for you. But an elephant inside the house will start breaking things, and that's exactly what happens. As these undigested proteins of wheat, barley, rye, and oats tumble through the intestinal tract, they destroy the villi mechanically, and they also carry an electrical charge. You know, a thundercloud, the bigger that the thundercloud is, the bigger the electrical charge that it holds and the bigger the lightning that comes out of it, right? It's the same thing with an undigested protein. Because of its size and complexity, uh, a protein carries an electrical charge. And as the undigested protein tumbles through the intestinal tract, it's like a live wire. And it will also destroy the villi through uh, something akin to contact dermatitis. You know, it, it, the electrical charge destroys the villi. It gives it a little zap. Now, remember, it is the job of the villi to absorb nutrients into the body. And when you destroy the villi, you impair the mechanism that the body absorbs nutrients through, right? So common sense then would dictate that when you eat wheat, barley, rye, and oats, and those undigested proteins tumble through the intestinal tract, as they destroy the tissue in the intestinal tract, all kinds of bad things happen. And again, that was Dr. Glidden. Thank you, Dr. Peter Glidden, for that uh, information about gluten. And um, if it was me, I would just cut it out altogether, which I have done. And it's made a huge difference in the way I feel. Make it a great day, and bye for now.